Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Yesterday on this program, we told you that the SEC had expanded their powers and are now exempt from request under the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, well, now the most transparent administration ever is today pushing to give the FBI even more power. Obama wants FBI field offices to be able to approach a company like yours or mine without a court order, without any judge, and compel you or me to hand over all of the internet activity of every one of the employees, but only if the agents deem the information relevant to a terrorist organization. Hang on just a second. If the FBI deems it to be relevant to a terrorist investigation, but no judge is involved. So what, you say? It's not like anyone views conservatives or tea parties or people carrying constitutional propaganda as militia members or terrorists. Oh, no way, they do. But here's the best part. All of this is accomplished by simply adding four words to already existing law. Electronic communication transactional records. And with the addition of those four words, the company, like your company, can tell anyone that the FBI comes snooping around. You cannot tell anyone that they've just taken all of your records. Sounds very wonderful, yeah? Sure, yes it does. It is yet another thing that makes no sense coming from the most transparent administration ever. Coming from the people who whined constantly about Bush's policies like warrantless wiretaps on phone calls from overseas to terrorists. But they're cool now with the FBI coming in and seizing email from American citizens here without a judge. See, here's the problem, America. The policy doesn't match the rhetoric. There is something, however, there is something that does match the policies of this administration. We have been comparing them this week. Tonight, the uh, third and final installment of the manifesto. It is how radicals think. You are going to learn even more tonight. It unfortunately may be the story of America. By the way, any, any progressive, anybody at uh, Media Matters or uh, any, anything funded by George Soros, and I think pretty much everything is funded by George Soros now, um, you know, they're, they always say they're afraid of me because I'm a one guy with a blackboard. Uh -uh. I got three tonight. Freak out. The goal of the Weather Underground, this is their manifesto, written in 1969. The goal was a dictatorship of a new democracy that developed into socialism. Okay? This is, uh, in fact, let me just move this over here. Show you. End capitalism and imperialism in the United States and replace it with a new democracy with a dictator and global socialism. Now let's, let's focus for a minute here on what a dictatorship really is. A dictatorship, according to the dictionary that I have, but that might be rewritten now, is an autocratic form of government in which the government is ruled by an individual, the dictator. Pretty simple. Never in America. It could never happen in America. That's why these people failed in 1969. But, but let's take a look at the direction that we're heading now. You, you tell me, are we headed, are we headed in the direction of more power going to you or the government. See, dictator is a really bad word, but if we replace dictator with all powerful, <laughs> all powerful government, well, which is it going to? A government controlled by the few, or maybe even one, or you having the power. Healthcare and financial reform, both massive bills 
that leave much of the decision making into the hands of the unelected bureaucrats who are selected by the president, namely Cass Sunstein, most dangerous man in America. That's what Glenn Beck has been saying. Cass Sunstein, why? Because Cass Sunstein makes all of the rules now. The SEC, they just said yesterday they don't have to answer any questions by the press. No Freedom of Information Act. Don't worry about it. The FBI now today, they can look at your emails without going to a judge first. And when they do, you cannot reveal it. How about the federal government zeroing in on states' rights, like in Arizona, the immigration law? Federal immigration standards instead of the state. And then you move, you move here to get rid of the electoral process. The electoral college makes states irrelevant. This is what our founders set up. So the big states wouldn't control the little states. They've already done it. Massachusetts, Illinois, New Jersey, Hawaii, Maryland, Washington. Now the, the push for cap and trade. The Electoral College, they're fighting to do it there. Cap and trade, they're fighting for that still. But you wonder if we even need it anymore because of financial regulation and health care. The EPA has just changed things. The EPA now says that... Uh, They'll just do it. You see, this is a power struggle. Guys, why don't we get rid of this chalkboard? This is a power struggle. And which direction is the power currently headed? Is it heading for you, more power for the individual, or more power for Washington? Replaced with a new democracy. This is what you have to decide. All of the, de the decisions by this administration are they just merely a, a wild, unlucky mistake, or is it a power struggle? Is it, are they trying to, are they trying to restore this? When you see this picture, what is it you think of? Are they trying to restore the power to the individual, the dad who went out at work at night, mom who's struggling to keep things right at home, going out and working too, and the kids getting a good education, the quintessential American family. Are we trying to restore the America that made sense? And I don't think it's made sense in over 100 years. Or are we doing something else? Are we trying to stabilize, as the president said today, stabilize America, or, Mr. President, are you trying to fundamentally transform it? A lot of people will glance at the document that we have been making available this week on our website, free, glennbeck.com, free, please read it. You don't have to be a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. They'll read this and say, that's the 1960s, it has nothing to do with today. Well, it's not like the president has this manifesto stapled, you know, behind the picture of Lincoln so he can, when nobody's looking, look at it. That's not what's happening. It's not like he's secretly trying to, you know, plot the end of the Vietnam War, which is over. Some of the names, some of the names from back then are still pretty familiar. I'm going to show you something. This is what we've been working on for the last week. There were three levels here. This is what happened in the 1960s. You had the man, you had the pig, and you had the baby killer. That's the way it was, according to the revolutionaries. The man, the p a baby killer, and the pigs. And then you had this family that are just keeping everybody down. They're the oppressors. They're the fascists. The people that you and I knew, they were fascists. And then there were the people, the radical revolutionaries, the hippies, as my grandfather used to call them. Oh, there's so much more than that. They're radical revolutionaries that plotted this to destroy America. But here's what's happened. This family is now down here, and it appears like this. The average person may not necessarily agree with the Tea Parties the way they are, but these people are now the radical revolutionaries. So who is now in this position? The position that they used to call you, fascists. We knew that this position was not for fascists, and they learned it as well. So those people, they cut their hair. They put on a decent shirt so it didn't look like that anymore. They started looking like mom. They haven't changed their positions. And the man is now here, 
friends.